Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Autosomo DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Kenyan Neolithic Pastorialist from this region in Kenya right here. So what's interesting, we're going to start with the haplogroup, right? So his haplogroup is E, his Y DNA is E. Uh, if you want a more detailed uh, haplogroup prediction for him, let's find that here. It's E1b, right? So his haplogroup is E1b. And his mitochondrial lineage is, it looks like L3, very interesting. Uh, in terms of what ethnicities he looks like, what he ethnicities he resembles, uh, let's open the ethnic calculator results. You can see here he resembles closest Tafaralt, which is very interesting. It's kind of like a native North African group that's ancestral to a lot of North Africans, followed by Kenya Pastorialist Neolithic, uh, African American 1, Kenya Pastorialist Neolithic, this other sample. Then Tafaraut, another sample from Tafaraut, then Berber, uh, then Upper Paleolithic individual from Salkit and Mongolia, then Shamlaka, then various uh, Egyptians, and then Moto Ethiopians. So it's not really, he's not really all that similar to Sub Saharan Africans. He's in Africa, it's very clear that it's an African individual, but he's more of a, it seems he's more of a North African or a Northeast African rather than a Sub Saharan African. By the way, keep in mind, that we know, I've made videos on these two Kenyan pastorialist Neolithic people. They are both uh, very heavy on the Natufian admixture. They are not entirely Sub-Saharan African. Uh, they are maybe majority Sub-Saharan, or may maybe even half Sub-Saharan African, but the other half is West Eurasian. So this individual clearly has a lot of West Eurasian drift, uh, West Eurasian specific uh, drift. And we can check that with GED match. So we open GED match, Eurogenes K13. You can see he's scoring 57% Northeast African, but this is a component that already has a little bit of West Eurasian drift packed into it. So this component is not the same as Sub-Saharan African. This component has a West Eurasian uh, admixture packed within it. He's also scoring 16% Red Sea, another very West Eurasian component, 8% East Mediterranean, a very West Eurasian component, a little bit West Mediterranean, another West Eurasian component. He is not really scoring any um, Northern European components, and I mean, I guess why should he? His um, his West Eurasian ancestry is Natufians. It is um, it is agriculturalist from the Middle East. They have nothing to do with Northern Europeans, so it's not surprising that he's not scoring any Northern European admixtures. We can see here with ancient Eurasia K6 that he is scoring twenty four and a half percent Natufian. In reality. Uh, all of this together is a part of the Natufian. So he's really 40% Natufian. Natufians. Natufians score around like 80% Natufian with this calculator. So it's really a it's really a reference that represents extreme uh, Middle Eastern specific drift. So really all these together are a part of this Natufian ancestry. So really he's 40% Natufian. And let's click on the Oracle. And we're going to see he's closest to Somali and Maasai. Maasai, I think, are in Kenya. Hadza are also, I think, in Kenya. And he's actually getting more as a mixture of 72% Hadza plus uh, 11 Bronze Age. So there is, you can see there is a Middle Eastern admixture here, very apparent. Uh, there is also Maasai plus Lebanese, which is also kind of easy for me to understand because Lebanese are uh, definitely West Eurasian people, no doubt about it. And Maasai are definitely Sub-Saharan Africans. They're from Kenya. They look very black. Uh, if you go by looks, there's um, Maasai plus Turkish, which is kind of interesting. So... Uh, a mixture of modern Kenyan Maasai plus around one-fifth of Eastern Mediterraneans seems to resemble this individual. So th there is clearly a Middle Eastern or West Eurasian admixture here. And we can see that with Gidrosia K3. Uh, once again, there is 33.8% West Eurasian admixture. <laughs> There's plenty of West Eurasian admixture in this individual. Uh, and I think the oracle here doesn't work, does it? No, it doesn't work. We could do the oracle by looking at the spreadsheet and like downloading that as a CSV file and putting that on Wahadur, but I don't want to do that here. Uh, it looks like there's plenty of West Eurasian admixture, and that's what I'm trying to show you here. So let's move on to phenotype, what this individual looked like. We're going to start with my Nashakot. And a new feature of Nashakot is now it prints, uh, it displays the pictures of what you might look like. So the closest phenotype to him is this, and it's actually... I'm really proud of that, actually. I, I think it's I think it's really cool because it's nilotic phenotype. It's a phenotype that's uh, like stereotypically Kenyan, and this individual is from Kenya. So it's really cool that my tool did that. I'm kind of proud. Uh, followed by that is this phenotype, which looks like West African, and this phenotype, which also looks West African. 
I don't really remember where these phenotypes are most common and it was maybe three or four days after I added them. So I don't I don't keep track in my memory of what locations they're present in. And when it comes to eye color, it looks like this individual has darkest brown eyes, definitely very dark eye color. And black hair, definitely very dark hair color as well. Uh, for skin tone, looks like very dark brown skin, definitely very dark skin tone once again. Um, for hair texture, it looks like kinky hair. All right, so th there is a 10% chance of curly hair, but it might be this chance might be there because of uh, low coverage. So most likely this individual has... Uh, most likely this, this individual has kinky hair. For coloring related variants found in the file, it looks like no BH3, no BH2. Heterozygous for BH1, which is pretty cool. And he actually has a lot of light color variants in these, in these variations as well, which is also pretty cool. And heterozygous for BH1 means there is some Eurasian ancestry. Uh, he's got the light allele in BH1 from Eurasian ad admixture. That's where he got it from because it is not present among Sub-Saharan Africans. So wh what, whatever his West Eurasian admixture is, if it's Natufians, it's, it's the Natufians that are responsible for him having a light color variant here. Um, okay, what else is there? Does not have Eurasian light skin variants in SLC 24A5. Okay. Um, what else is here? No light, no light color variants in this variation of SLC 45A2. So no, um, light, light eyes, hair, skin. Uh, this variation is very, uh, strongly implicated in hair and eye color. Um, it's also a little bit implicated in skin color. All three traits, the trifecta. Um, he has two light color variants in this variation of Keto G, which is very interesting. Once again, he got that from Eurasian admixture. Uh, this is not something you will find about um, among uh, the Africans. And he does not have any light color variants in MC1R, so it looks like there is no predisposition to being ginger. Despite having light color variants in some pretty important variations, like, uh, for example, BH1, he still has very dark eye color and hair color. Look at that, and skin color too. So you really need to have... You, you need to have um, more than just one light color variant in one gene, in one region of one gene, uh, to have these light pigmentation traits, is what I'm saying. So despite him having heterozygous genotype for BH1, that is not enough for him to have um, any kind of light, any kind of light pigmentation. And by the way, if you're a European and you have heterozygous genotype for BH1, it's going to be very different. Uh, it's going to be very different because most likely all the other genotypes will be different as well because you're a European, right? So a European with heterozygous genotype in BH1 uh, is going to score mostly brown or even hazel eyes and not darkest brown eyes and not black hair. But this individual is sub-Saharan African and all his other genotypes are uh, really, uh, really atypical for Europeans and really dark. That's why, uh, for example, 23andMe, the way they give you a eye color prediction uh, or, you know, Snipper Free or any of these other tools. That's why they're so bad because um, they give you an eye color estimate based on one genotype. And for 23andMe, it's literally just one genotype. It's just genotype here. For, uh, unless you account for everything, what I'm saying is unle unless you account for everything as you do with Mina Shakot, you are not going to have an accurate phenotype prediction. So Snipper Free, uh, 23andMe eye color predictor, or I don't know. YSEC, all of them are really, really trash. Okay, so now let's move on to polygenic risk scores and what kind of monogenic traits this individual has. We're going to start with the polygenic risk scores right here. So it looks like this individual has a above average score for schizophrenia, a slightly below average score for type 2 diabetes, a below average score for Alzheimer's, a slightly below average score for multiple sclerosis. So it looks like pretty healthy so far. And free risk variance for breast cancer out of 12, pretty, pretty healthy. 6 out of 16 for testicular cancer, pretty healthy. Um, 2 risk variance for celiac disease out of 8, which is, um, I think, pretty healthy as well. For GSS, 0 out of 10, pretty good. For Crohn's, 6 out of 22. Um, I guess it's a, little bit, it's a little bit over the average. So we're going to have to check the Crohn's section if any of those 6 risk variants are in the important variations. For Reifenstein's, it looks like nothing was found. All right. And for Parkinson's, 1 out of 10, which is, I guess, pretty... Mm, okay. It's okay. So there's nothing too concerning here. It looks like this individual has heterozygous genotype and Combs Valmet variation, which means he is uh, Valmet genotype. He's heterozygous for this. 
So he's actually between the warrior and the warrior phenotypes. But he has the warrior genotype in MAUA. So overall, his phenotype it probably leans, leans towards warrior, which is very interesting. And it's kind of a European, uh, it's kind of a European trait as well to be a warrior. So warrior means uh, lower activity of both, both the COMT and MAUA enzymes, and therefore uh, you have slower breakdown of dopamine, more dopamine builds up in the system, higher dopamine levels, and certain advantages in memory and attention tasks. I just made a video on this yesterday. Uh, if you watched it, you understand what warrior and warrior is, uh, with the implications of these genotypes. Uh, it looks like he does not have any no-go learner variants in the early to pro so once again, higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and higher likelihood of schizophrenia. All right. And no A1 allele in TAC1, so he does not have the uh, A1 allele in TAC1, which would predispose him to certain things like alcoholism and ADHD and Parkinson's. Uh, and greatly reduce the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. So it's good that he doesn't have the A1 allele. Really good. And it looks like he also does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR, and he does not have a decrease in the risk of depression. He's got a average or slightly above average odds for depression. For autism, it looks like he does not have any... But we don't, we don't care. We don't care. Autism doesn't matter. DDC, it looks like nothing relevant was found. For lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry any European lactose persistence mutations. Really good to see. Well, I don't know if it's really good to see. It's just, I'm glad it's here in the file. For OXTR and the empathy gene, it looks like he has two sociopath variants for reduced OXTR expression and lack of empathy, which is really interesting because it's really atypical for Sub-Saharan Africans to get that, to have that genotype. Really, really interesting. Really surprising. All right, for diabetes, it looks like he does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see. Hemochromatosis, nothing relevant was found. Alzheimer's, it looks like he does not have risk variance in APOE, so that's really good to see. Multiple sclerosis, zero risk variance in HLA gene, so this is by far the most important gene for MS risk, so here it's a good genotype, really good. Uh, cardiovascular disease, we're going to skip that. Myopia, it looks like he's got a... Um, he does not have the G allele here, which would protect from myopia, but that's not surprising because pretty much only Europeans have the G allele here. Miscellaneous section. All right, that's the fun section. No micropenis. All right, good to see. Higher IQ, better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than an endurance athlete. One fat gene variant in, in FTOs RSD 9609, so uh, slightly higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea, a little bit predisposed to being overweight. He also likely has folic sneeze, ref sneeze reflex, which is very European. But I'm surprised that he has the genotype. No variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. Okay, cool. And it looks like he's got a genotype in EDAR that's typical for Europeans. Uh, his EDAR genotype is atypical for East Asians and typical for Europeans. So he does not have East Asian EDAR. And he's also not an Asian flusher. Very low odds of alcoholism and normal risk of esophageal cancer. All right. We're going to skip drug response. We're going to skip albinism. We're going to skip familiar Mediterranean fever. Um, MTHFR, he's got a genotype in this variation of MTHFR, which is very interesting. It leads to a 10 to 20% efficiency in processing folic acid. And this does re lead to a higher odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. It's kind of a atypical genotype, uncommon genotype. Okay. Um, cancer, for cancer span, all right. So he's got genotypes for reduced risk of testicular cancer, really good. Definitely does not have a um, does definitely does not have testicular cancer. That's good to see. Leukemia panel. It looks like he's got this genotype, which lowers the risk of leukemia, but this genotype, which slightly increases the risk of leukemia. All right. For rare diseases panel, it looks like he does not have GSS. And he's got this genotype, which leads to high risk for certain autoimmune diseases, including Addison's and type 2 diabetes. Type 1, excuse me. <laughs> type 2 diabetes is not an autoimmune disease, in case you get confused. Uh, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. For celiac disease, it looks like he does not have any risk variance in the HLA gene. Once again, really good to see. For uh, allergies, we're going to skip. Androgen receptor gene, it looks like he's got GG genotype here, which leads to typical or higher odds of boldness, which is very interesting because Sub-Saharan Africans tend to have the A allele here that protects from going bold. So it looks like he's got, a gene, he's got an allele, a genotype that's uncommon for his ethnicity. Uh, it leads to something that's kind of bad because I would say that losing your hair as a man 
uh, is uh, unfortunate, really unfortunate. For Crohn's disease panel, nothing nothing important was found. So he's he we remember he had six risk variants for that, and none of those six variants are important. So that's good. Canavan syndrome, it looks like zero risk variants. Good to see. HIV and AIDS panel. He actually has one protective variant here, uh, which leads to a 60% reduction in HIV viral load. So he's a little bit protected from HIV, actually. Really good. Really, really good. Uh, for muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like zero for ADL out of zero, but there was one risk allele found in this variation, which is kind of interesting. Um, we could look it up. Let's look it up. Yeah, let's look it up. Let's look it up and see what it is. I don't. I think I would. I think I would have to look this up on uh, Gavas Central, not on Sympedia. All right. If you're curious about it, you can look it up on Gavas Central. For color blindness panel, no risk variants for that. Really good to see. For FTO gene panel, it looks like he's got a high risk of obesity in this in heterozygous in this variation, but homozygous in this variation, which leads to much higher BMI, all right, and heterozygous in this variation. So he seems to be a little bit predisposed to obesity, actually. Very interesting. Uh, and biotraits panel, only one variation was found here, and it's that he has a higher predisposition to anger. All right. Very, very interesting. I'm glad that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you watched it until the end, you definitely enjoyed it. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Also, you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.